Hi, this is Mr. Griffith, and uh, today we're going to be talking about sets and whole numbers. So this is for Math uh, 141 Mathematical Models, or Mathematics for Elementary School Teachers. And so what we want to do, first of all, is we want to uh, define what a set is. And so when we talk about a set, uh, we're going to note that a set is a a uh, well-defined uh, collection of objects. Uh, these objects otherwise are known as elements. Okay. This idea of being uh, well-defined is important to a set because uh, one has to know whether something belongs to a set or does not belong to a set. Uh, for example, I can talk about the set of uh, counting numbers, or I can talk about the set of dishes uh, in my cabinet, or I can talk about the set of students who are uh, in my course. There are ways that I can determine whether or not some Somebody, belong, somebody or something belongs in the set or not, whether it is an element or is not. But if a set is not well defined, then things are not so easy and things become very fuzzy uh, all of a sudden. For example, how about the set of good teachers? Now, some people might think that I'm a good teacher and other people would take a look and say, I'm definitely not a good teacher. There would be more than one opinion about the matter. And since good is not something that is necessarily easily uh, definable or that you can agree on that this is absolutely the characteristics that make a good teacher, uh, and without this you do not have a good teacher, you know, the measurement system and all of this, uh, then uh, we would say that the set of good teachers is not well-defined. Uh, so we want a well-defined collection of objects uh, that is uh, elements. So for example, I can talk about, let's say, set C, uh, which uh, we'll have as a set of colors of uh, red, uh, green, and uh, blue. Now you can see here that uh, here's this set of, uh, uh, of colors, red, green, and blue, and uh, I can talk about whether or not something belongs to that set C. So for example, red definitely is an element of set C. This little uh, almost looks like an E here, means it is an element, okay? Uh, on the other hand, uh, brown, okay, would not be an element of set C. I already defined what set C is, these three colors uh, right there. Brown is not an element of it. Well, uh, how about G? Is G an element of that set? And uh, the answer is no. Even though G appears here, uh, G, that's just a part of the element name. That does not mean that G is an element. G is not an element of set C. So when I take a look at this, I can define an element. So red, green, and uh, blue. Well, uh, let's suppose that uh, I take a look at another set. Oh, let's, uh, let's say set B, uh, which we'll talk, uh, consider to be a set of shapes, okay? And here's a square and a uh, triangle and a circle, okay? And uh, B and C are two different sets. Now, we say that two sets 
are equal, equal, if they have exactly the same elements, exactly the same elements, okay? These sets are not equal, okay? So we would have to say here that B is not equal to C. However, we can talk about two sets being equivalent. And we can say that uh, two sets are equivalent, okay, if they have the same number of elements. Now, this same number of, okay, uh, we're going to refer to as an idea called cardinality. And cardinality is just a fancy word for talking about uh, the same number of elements. Now, this uh, equivalence here, you can see that B and C have the same number of elements. But how can we demonstrate that or prove it? Well, I can prove that they have the same number of elements if I put them into a one-to-one -one correspondence. This idea of a one-to-one -one correspondence essentially means that one element of one set is paired or matched with one and only one element of the other set, and vice versa. Now, in this one-to-one -one correspondence, notice that every item of this set is, has been paired uh, with uh, every item in here, essentially, uh, but, but each element here only with one element in C. So this idea here, one-to-one -one correspondence, I could have done it differently. I could have put the one-to-one -one correspondence, oh, let's say, with uh, the red there, and the blue there, and the green there. It really doesn't matter which items are paired with which, just so long as one uh, element gets paired with one and only one element of uh, the other set. So this idea of uh, equivalence then, we would say that B is equivalent to set C. Sometimes they use a double uh, tilde there to note equivalence, but uh, I'll use a single one at the moment. So B is equivalent to C. Uh, these sets are equivalent because they have the same cardinality or the same uh, number of elements. Now, this brings up uh, an idea. How can I understand uh, sets in relationship to each other. How can I understand the importance of size or how many? Now, size and how many are ideas that uh, occur intrinsically in people and we don't ever have to tell uh, people to think about it. You just give a couple of kids uh, pieces of cake and automatically they will look at each other's piece of cake and look at their own to try to determine who has more. Uh, so there is this idea, this more is a built-in idea uh, in the, the human psyche. But in, mathema in mathematics, we really want to try to bring more uh, down to um, to a formal level. And so when we take a look at how we develop ideas of more, 
we develop ideas by uh, taking a look at how things are, uh, one set is created from another set. And so, uh, intrinsically, we look at sets as being created from uh, larger sets. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a uh, set here A, and uh, you can see that I'm just, uh, I'm just using the first five uh, counting numbers there, okay? And I'm going to create two different sets here. You can see that I've got a set B here uh, being one, two, three, and set C here being one, two, and six. Okay. Now, let's just talk about the relationship of these sets uh, to set A. Okay. And you can see that uh, B has all of the uh, 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 all has elements that are chosen from set A. And so I can say that a set B is a subset of a set A if every element in B is also in A. Or I could say it this way. I could say if uh, B can be constructed from the elements in set A. Now, these two things are, uh, they mean the same thing, okay? They're just different ways of saying the same thing, uh, slightly different focus. This just says uh, every element in B is found in set A, and uh, this definition here is more of a construction argument. If you can take the elements of set A and create another set, then that is automatically going to be a subset. Two different uh, focuses essentially winding up saying, meaning exactly the same thing. Uh, so you can see here, uh, we're going to say that B is a subset of set A, and this right here, uh, this symbol right here is the symbol we use for a uh, subset, okay? Now, this symbol, as a chosen symbol for subset, is uh, very, very important. Uh, I don't think you'll find this in the text. I haven't found any texts uh, yet that actually talk about this. But if you take a look at this, this symbol is uh, really saying something uh, very interesting. Can you see that this symbol is very much like a less than or equal to sign? And so in this case, if I were to say B is less than or equal to A, you can see the idea here that B, the elements of B here, uh, come from A. B doesn't have as many elements as said A. Uh, B is essentially less than said A. This, uh, and uh, if, you know, even with four and five, it would have been equal to said A. But you can see that this gives us the uh, sort of the idea of subset that we have built up in our definitions here. Uh, this less than or equal to idea. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you can see here that C is not a subset of set A by either definition. First of all, you cannot construct C from the elements of set A. And C actually contains elements uh, that are not found in set A. And so C is not a subset of set A. 
this also sort of un, uh, doesn't go along with the idea of less than either very well because although C does not have some of the elements that uh, A has, uh, C also does, on the other hand, contain some elements that A does not. So there's not really a way to compare a greater than or less than type of idea. And so a C is not less than A, C is not a subset of A. So here we have, at, uh, at this point, uh, a, a big idea uh, where we have created one set from another, this idea of subset. But we can go a little bit further from this, and you can see that B it not only is uh, uh, less than or equal to A, B is actually strictly less than A. And so I can talk about uh, B this way. I could say B has this relationship to A. And what am I doing? I am removing the uh, equal to idea here from this. Well, what do we call this? Okay. Obviously, it's going to have something to do with a subset, but I'll tell you what, let's talk about another idea and see if we can bring it into context. You understand that if we were to think of as A being the whole, let's just talk about A being the whole and B being a part, okay? And so we have an idea of a part that is less than a whole. If we talk about a part that is less than a whole, okay, in a fraction concept like six sevenths, here's how many it takes to make up a whole, and here's how many parts you have, we call this a proper fraction. And so, if I'm going to talk about this, where this is less than the whole, it's, it's certainly a subset, but it is less than the set it is taken from, I can call this a proper subset. And do you see how this idea, this word proper, is used in the two mathematical contexts actually meaning the same thing? Okay. And so, uh, does, that, does that make sense? Uh, I should hope so. So this proper subset, uh, so going to be a proper subset what? Well, first of all, if it is a subset, okay? So two things, okay, B is a subset of A, okay? And how do I denote then that uh, uh, B is actually strictly less than? I can say that B is not uh, equal to A. So there are these two parts, and there might be other ways that you could actually define the idea of uh, of subset, but this is how it, uh, it is put in to, uh, to practice this way. You, you, you can try to find some other ways.